let's just quickly pick our best 11 from the two. Is this teams. sensible? I mean, we've already upset India, Pakistan, Australia, Shane Warne, Nathan Lyon. I mean, is this sensible that we are now going to upset even more? And it, I mean, 11 great cricketers are going to be upset here, aren't they? Well, come on, but let's just, let's, just, let's just do it. Let's, once more into the breach, dear friends. Right. Um, so we've got the choice of four. Well, we need two openers. We've got four that we chose. We've got Saywag, Graham Smith, Matt Hayden, Marcus Treskothic. Now, let's rule out Tres because you only picked him because you wanted to pick one Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you did that. So who are we going for? Our own? I'm saying Hayden, number one. You're going who? Hayden. Right, slightly tougher now. Graham Smith, Verinda Saywag, or Trez, if you want Trez. Who do you reckon? Well, thank, thanks for letting me pick someone that I originally picked. <laughs> Rob, that really nice of you. Um, I'm going to go just for the complete all-round player, Graham Smith, on that one. Where are you yeah. going, Keezy? Yeah, I agree with you, Graham Smith, on that. Number three, Ponting or Sangakara? This is tough, actually. It's tough. Are you allowed to go first on any of these or not? You go first on this one. Well, I am going to go for Ricky Ponting. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> Ricky Ponting was just so fantastic to watch. I'm sorry. You know, some of his counter-attacking innings, I'm going to have to go Ponting on that one. Right. Here we go, then. NASA. So I suppose this actually isn't as controversial as we think. Coley or Sachin? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna not bottom. I'm gonna I'm go in test cricket Sachin, but if it was any, if it was all formats as I said at the start, I think I'd go Cole yeah, and Sachin in test cricket. Agree? I think yeah, I have, think yeah, what was it? Yeah, I think you're gonna have to go Sachin. What was it? Two hundred test matches. Yeah, he Sachin has the advantage in that. His career was so long. He debuted so young, played 200 test matches. Um, Cody's run scoring is phenomenal. He may overtake some of Sachin's records, but for longevity, Sachin would probably get it. 25-year international career, not many can claim that. Yeah, we can't do it for longevity because Coley's not as old as him. You know, well, so I think John Embury on one of our tours wore a T-shirt saying, the older I get, the better I was. So some of these cricketers... You know, you look back on them and they are just legendary status. Um, so when we look back eventually on Coley, you long, we'll be long gone, Rob, by the way. But when we look back on Coley, he will be an absolute, he is now, but he will have legendary status. But right now, you'd probably go Sachin in that one. Steve Smith or Brian Lara? Now, I, I, mean, I don't know if it's because we're looking at, like you say, I'm looking at it from memories as a kid. I remember being 11 in the nets and trying to pick up of Lara. But I've just got to go for Lara over Steve Smith. Agree? I, I agree. But Steve Smith's stats are, I mean, he's almost Bradman-esque. He really is. But again, Lara, I mean, I played in two games, 375, 401 or whatever. The bloke was just an absolute genius. I'm going lower on that one. Smith offers a little bit of leg spin if you need it, Rob. Yeah, very useful when we're going to have Shane Warne on our side. <laughs> Good thinking. I mean, as he is, Rob's upset him. He's now going to turn to Shane and go, Shane, just take a blow. Steve, come and have a little bowl. Shane's struggling. <laughs> Good thinking, Benny. Stokes or Callis? I'm, I'm, I'm going Callis. Yeah, but for a number six... You know, a reluctant bowler, Callis. I'm mean, trying. Yeah. Um, statistically, it doesn't bear out. But would I want? Can Ben Stokes give more to my side? Is that, oh. Is that the phone? Who's on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Wardy, Benny? Bring it up with a complaint. <laughs> Steve Smith. He's been practicing his leg breaks in lockdown. <laughs> Right. I'm going, I'm going again, Callis now, Ben Stokes somewhere down the line will probably end up with, with similar stats to Callis. The only thing is, in my, that's something I got nailed in my side, Rob, was like, you're right, batting Callis at six, you know, he, but Ben Stokes is more that sort of, that number six. Callis is a proper frontline batsman, but I'm still going Callis. I'm, st unlike you, I'm sticking loyal to my team. You're sticking loyal to your friends. 
<laughs> I, no, I, I think for that position though, that number six, you know, you can't argue with Callis's stats, but you know, would Stokes be more of a match winner in a one-off game than Jack Callis? It's an interesting. Are you going to sit on the fence? Are you going to answer? Which are you going? I'm happy that we go with Callis. Where is he? Number three in all-time run scorers. Where is he? number four? Yeah, he's got four. I mean, he's also got 45 Test hundreds and 292 wickets, which isn't bad for a reluctant bowler, I guess. Pretty good. Ca- they're both pretty good catchers. I was going to say Callis is a pretty good catcher. But as we've seen re- recently, Stokes is a pretty good catcher as well. So the reluctancy in your, no- in your voice, Rob, if you have to leave Flintoff Stokes or Joss Butler out of any side, <laughs> it's like the end of your world, seriously. It's like your lunch order hasn't turned up on time or something. It is, you're absolutely distraught. Move on. Uh, now, I took a bit of a liberty here. Um, you did. Because we're talking about a keeper. A.B. de Villiers or Adam Gilchrist? I'm going to go... Gilchrist because AB only kept what 20 odd times, Benny. Yeah, yeah. Have you not worked the anomaly in this? You are literally picking my side, and we're still saying that your side won. This is an absolute farce, Gilchrist, every time. Well, and the other thing is, is that the one player so far from my or the latter generation uh, is Graham Smith, who probably arguably played nearly as much in the 2000s, didn't he? Early part of it. Uh, yeah, it was the end of me, wasn't he? So when was that? 2004. 2002, he sort of yeah. started. Yeah, no, he fits perfectly in your era, but you're picking a lot of players from my era. I mean, is there any other wicket keeper that would, in, in, our, in that period, that would be, I mean, Sangers, you're right, but Sangers as a batsman was so much better, you probably wouldn't give him the glove. So Gilchrist, definitely. I mean, Gilchrist ruined it for everyone, didn't he? Before yeah. then, you had all the people who were practicing all their keeping all the time and everyone's loving them. They're averaging five. Yeah. You know, but they, they're catching a ball with gloves on, which must be really hard. Um, <laughs> and Gilchrist made, made them all go back. Quite right, too. Um, right. Cummins or Akram? Again, no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, like... I would have, with Malcolm Marshall, I would have Wazim Akram... I don't know who the third one would be, but would be in my list of three greatest ever fast bowlers. Again, that's a personal thing in that I really struggled against Wazim Akram. I'd, I would go Akram in that. Right. Are we going to allow two spinners? No, because then we would, we would finally, finally have the answer with, with video footage of Warren or Murley. You can't say one thing on a text to me and another thing to his face when you're playing golf with him. So finally, to the world, you would have to say who is the better bowler. So one spinner, and I have stated clearly that I feel that Shane Warne is the greatest bowler of all time, let alone spinner. So you have my crystal clear answer. Rob Key, who is the better spin bowler, your mate Murley or your other mate Shane Warne? Benedict. um... (laughs) Give us a casting vote. No, 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 come on. Benedict, don't say anything. I don't know, to be honest. It's impossible to say. So No, I am... we're not. We're, this could be the longest podcast ever. Right, OK. Number 10. <laughs> Who are the Warren and Murley? My closest mates. I can't do That's it. fine. You to be, if you want to be... I, I read, in your, I read I in your book, it says you are one of the greatest pundits of all time. One of the great cricket bands. That book, yeah, behind you. Warren or Murley? Have you added to your bookshelf overnight? Do I see no, no. Shakespeare on there? There's an, illus- there's an illustrated Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, okay, so... No, no, Warren we're not going. We're not leaving you. Warren or Murley? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're both as good as each other. They're both geniuses. Uh, right. Now we've got a choice. We'll have to do this. McGrath, Anderson or Stain? You can have... Uh, if you wanted Cummins, you could have Cummins or someone. But are we saying the great McGrath is in there? I'm going the other one. I'm going just purely because of his strike rate. Dale Stain has to be in there. I mean, okay, so we got Stain phenomenal. in there. And then so it's McGrath got... or Anderson or Cummins. I'd say McGrath for all conditions all around the world and what he did with the cook. I mean, imagine his stats and he's bowled at his pace with a cook of a ball 
in Australia. And you know the cook of a ball does nothing. Yeah. So more than half, you know, half his cricket with that cook of a ball, just phenomenal. Really. So I'm probably going McGrath. Yeah, OK, I'd agree with that. But just explain one thing, because Freddie said this, and I played a bit against McGrath, but you played, that was towards the end. Freddie said, you know, when you faced him, and I found this, he didn't do much with it. He wasn't that quick either, like compared to Brett Lee and people like that. What was it about him that made him so tough? Um, well, first of all, metronomic accuracy. He just gave you nothing to hit at all. So you were always down his end, struggling. Yeah. And if you had any kind of technical weakness, he would exploit that. I mean, Athers, we showed that footage of the Donald Atherton battle. And Athers, as a young lad, had the perfect technique. But just towards the end of his career, Ath's bat used to come, we used to call him scissor hands, because his bat used to come down like that. And that's why his stats against McGrath just fell off a cliff completely because Ath's bat used to come like that and McGrath used to just nibble it and just go past his outside edge or inside edge. So if you had any kind of technical failing, McGrath used to find you. And also the combination worn at the other end. It's all right to see off McGrath. He can get runs at the other end. But if Warren is at the other end, McGrath, Lee, etc., there was just no letter. Benedict, have you got anything to back up uh, what Nasser's just said about McGrath? The fact he was the leading seam bowling wicket taker for so long before Jimmy went past him, and he could perform around the world. He bowled out Pakistan for 53 and 59 in the same test match in the UAE. So really, he was a master of all conditions. And the other thing about all of this, which again, does bring into question the actual stimulation that we ran, which the latter period of Sky, the 30 years that Sky have done cricket, won the test match because only Graham Smith and Dale Stain have managed to make it into the 11 out of the entire 30 years. I don't know, as you're right, it's the one thing, being the age that I am, what, 41, and you obviously played against a lot of these guys, you just look back with so many fond memories of these players and, and statistically they're all up there now. I just wonder whether Steve Smith, Virat Kohli, Ben Stokes, Cummins, obviously not Stain, but Jimmy's gone past anyone else, will end up overtaking any of them. It'd be fascinating to see over the next however long. I completely agree with that. And I know what you've tried to achieve out of this virtual test is basically you're like the man singing the praises for the modern generation. And when we turn up to the Aegeus Bowl, you're just going to throw me under the bus as the bloke who, <laughs> as the bloke who said my era was better in every single way. I completely disagree with that, to be honest. I have huge admiration for this generation, this era, their fitness, the formats they play in, the three different formats. I mean, you will, those names you name, Smith, Coley, Cummins, Anderson, Stain, et cetera, et cetera, will end up some of the great cricketers of all time. So, I mean, and also I think we have to show some respect for the names we haven't mentioned, the likes of Pollock, Donald, Sacklane, Mushtak, Anil Kumble, Harbhajan Singh, et cetera, et cetera, Raul Dravid, um, VVS Latchman, there are a lot of players that didn't make these squads and there's a lot of people we've upset, Rob Key. Well done. <laughs> but we hope everyone's enjoyed it. If you followed us on social media, uh, as I always say, have a look at Sky Cricket's YouTube channel for loads and loads of stuff. And hopefully uh, we'll have some live cricket coming around the 8th of July. Fingers crossed for that. Stay well, everyone.